So in regards to treatment, now there's a, obviously with the PSA, there's so many things affecting the PSA when it comes to now getting into the process of having prostate cancer and also prostatitis. So let's just go down the list of, of treatments when it comes to prostatitis and prostate cancer. So will radiation treatment make symptomatic prostatitis worse or better? So, well, you've injected another variable. So we've talked about acute prostatitis, we've talked about chronic prostatitis, um, and you're referring to something called radiation prostatitis. So radiation prostatitis, again, is inflammation of the prostate. It can cause PSAs to go higher. Uh, and it um, also comes in two forms, an acute form, which is something that's ongoing during or immediately after radiation, an inflammatory reaction to the radiation that may last six to eight to 10 weeks and then tend to get better. And then a more chronic type of prostatitis that can drag on, thankfully not very commonly, but maybe for a year or two. Um, there's even a third type of radiation prostatitis that we call the radiation bump, which is where someone had radiation two or three years ago, and now all of a sudden PSA is going up due to delayed inflammation in the gland we call that the PSA bump. So to answer your question, uh, if someone has pre-existing chronic prostatitis and now has radiation uh, in addition, it's variable. Sometimes the radiation over time will actually settle the prostate, uh, prostate inflammation down. So if someone has chronic prostatitis, has a radiated prostate, it may temporarily get worse and then over time may improve as the radiation kind of zaps the prostate. And so it, there's not a real clear um, guaranteed outcome if someone has pre-existing chronic prostatitis, has some radiation, but the general rule of thumb is that short term it'll get worse, long term it'll get better. I mean, is there any specific treatments that you would do for somebody who's experienced either of those types of prostatitis after radiation treatment? Anything in the meantime to get the symptoms down? Yeah, uh, there's a long list of things that are used. Probably the most common are the alpha blockers like Flomax and Rapiflow. Um, standard anti-inflammatories like Aleve and Celebrex are definitely useful. Um, and men that have a really acute form of radiation prostatitis in desperate situations, sometimes some cortisone will be administered. Um, there are other things too, uh, antispasmodics and a long list of things. And whenever you have a long list of treatments available, it usually means that none of them are super great. And uh, oftentimes men have to sort of suffer through the process until it resolves on its own. This is really talking about when a man has prostatitis before he gets into radiation, how will his PSA be affected after treatment? Right, so when someone has um, a radiation treatment to uh, when they have a prostate gland, sometimes men get radiation to, you know, they've had previous surgery and you're not gonna see much impact on the PSA. But if someone has uh, is undergoing radiation and you check the PSA within a month or two, the PSA will often be higher because of the additional inflammation caused in the gland by the radiation itself. And then over time, as that radiation effect dissipates, the PSA will then settle down. Is there any data to show that patients with asymptomatic prostatitis would do better or worse after they've had treatment? Well, historically, uh, men that have big prostates and a lot of urinary symptoms as a result of the large prostate, not really prostatitis per se, um, uh, who are gonna get a bigger dose of radiation because they have a big target, a big prostate, uh, there have been concerns that those men are gonna be at greater risk for long-term urinary problems after the radiation. So sometimes uh, doctors will recommend a course of hormone treatment to shrink the size of the prostate. So lingering effects of radiation after radiation treatment is finished, um, lingering meaning say more than a year or so, uh, they're probably more related to the genetic makeup of the human that is getting the treatment. It appears that about two or three percent of the general population has um, a different type of genetic makeup that doesn't heal very well after radiation. Uh, some work is ongoing. Uh, I had an interview with Joan Wiederhaus, who's uh, doing uh, studies at UCLA, looking at the genetic profile of people before they have radiation to see if they can predict who these relatively rare patients are, the two to three percent of the population that have slow healing after they undergo radiation. And so um, those people uh, are the most prone to having long-term problems uh, with ongoing prostatitis type symptoms after they undergo radiation. So does the presence of symptomatic prostatitis ever affect the treatment decision? Well, if people are really struggling, then of course, 
at least in the short term when they undergo radiation, those symptoms will get even worse. So um, one of the fears when people have radiation is uh, if their prostatitis gets so serious where they start to obstruct their urine flow, they might need to have a catheter placed until all the problems uh, blow over. And that's unpleasant. I mean, if someone's um, got an inflammatory condition going and it's very painful when they urinate, or if the urine flow is blocked due to the inflammation, uh, to have to have a catheter in for a month or more is very undesirable. And, uh, and so that is one of the risks that people with pre-existing prostatitis have to count when they think about doing radiation. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like more information, you can visit our website at pcri.org. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new prostate cancer videos every week.